Hello fellow YouTubers, this is Eric again with a second video of body modding your Hot Toys slash Soldier Story Frankenbodies, just put it as Frankenbodies, making your own body from pre-existing parts. So we all have choices and what you have in front of you right here are mainly the bodies I work with, um, excluding the Medicom body. Um, as for everything else, uh, we have the Medicom body. This is the real action hero body. Uh, it comes in this one and uh, a massive one which is basically an extra plastic padding for the chest, a uh, little bit bigger arms, a little padding on the thighs, and longer extensions for ankles and wrists. So basically that is the Medicom body. But what you will notice about the Medicom over all other, all other bodies on this market is it is a little under scale and the parts fit less comfy in, uh, on other body brands. So I haven't really swapped many pieces of Medicom stuff onto any other body. So getting the Medicom out of the way, uh, we have the Slim, uh, I think it's the 21, 20, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, this is a soldier story body. The regular Hot Toys base body and the Arnold body. I'm pretty sure you guys are all aware of it who do play around with these uh, figures. Now this one is, excuse this one as it's um, looks different because it has bulking uh, done with uh, kind of the ghetto fabulous way where to add padding since he's going to be closed I was working on him earlier um, all that's done is it's added some styrofoam it's soft enough to bulk out clothing and you really can't tell the difference and it actually makes the uh, clothes on a figure seem more natural as funny as that sounds and normally you would stick them underneath the the arms where it touches his uh, ribs and on the outer forearms just so it pads the right areas on our on our on the clothes that he wears. So, for example, um, here is one with clothes on. Ah, crud. I always do that, don't I? It's my second time in my second video. Alright, so this is him with clothes on. Now, he doesn't have the padding on the arms because he has got short sleeves, but he does have padding in the pants. So, you see how it actually makes the pants. drape a little bit differently. I believe this one has the padding. So, kind of does it. Well, this one's not really done, but you get the idea of what I mean by padding out the clothes to fit better. Because they're not tight-fitting clothes, and like I said, I do military stuff. But, um, it gives you an idea of how you can do it for other stuff. But uh, a little bit of foam padding in the right areas for specific types of uh, characters it does the job. Now um, we have the soldier story body. Now swapping parts with the soldier story body and the hot toys body might be a slight different only because the um, the arms and the shoulder joints and the legs they're not really 
as compatible as they are with the Hot Toys. So today I'm mainly going to be working with uh, Hot Toys, the Hot Toys parts. So, <clears throat> for example, why Soldier Story is different, I'll give you a quick rundown. Here we have Soldier Story torso. Like I said, the neck isn't removable because it's one piece. Um, the shoulder joints on a Soldier Story body are a bit more bulkier than they are on Hot Toys bodies. And it just doesn't fit as well. And also the peg, uh, which I'll get to later on and I'll show you the difference. But um, also here is where they differ as well. That is that joint that fits onto the lower torso hip of the body, which is rubberized for Soldier Story. And uh, that keeps the tension on the torso. But one good thing about Soldier Story and Hot Toys is not the feet, but the pants. And I believe I have it here. These are Soldier Story hand pegs, the wrist pegs, which goes into the wrist. Now, the ball is similar in some aspects. The only thing that's not similar is probably the peg which goes into the forearm. So this is the Soldier Story. That's the part that goes into the forearm. And this is a Hot Toys. And that would be the part that goes onto the forearm. Now if you can tell the difference it's a big difference, but not just because of, you know, one's longer than the other, but the thickness as well. So if you wanted to model, which you can, well, what you would do with the soldier, regarding on which one you want to use, you would either cut this down and either use the crazy glue method of slabbing on layer by layer until it builds up and hardens to get the uh, thickness achieved to, you know, have the correct tensions to keep it in place in the body. But um, where the actual hands connect to, even though they're a little different, they fit well. And I'll give you an example. Here is the Soldier Story wrist peg and a Soldier Story hand. I love Soldier Story's hands because they're really more to size than the Hot Toys hands and especially gripping and they're actually really well done really well casted I don't know what they made of that but it's really well done and that they also make the bendable version which goes a long way for Hot Toys figures if you go that route now other than for that one little hole on the outside of the hand, these are very well made and they pose very well, given you know how to pose hands. Now, this is the Hot Toy um, wrist peg. and I'm just going to put that on. Perfect fit. Now, you can tell those are one good thing about <coughs> Soldier Story to Hot Toys is that at least their hands are, you know, compatible without any modification. Um, as for the Soldier Story feet, they go by the ball hip. So the ball hip would connect to the leg. You really can't do much with that for Hot Toys. Also, the ankle. This is actually the ankle extension. They actually have shorter ones where it actually hides the ankle altogether, but uh, articulation goes out the window a little bit. So, well. <coughs> um, 
Yes. There we go. Okay, here's what I meant by the ankle. These are hidden ankles, which you still have a little bit of play. Actually, you got a lot of it. Yeah. So, that's if you're having a dude in shorts and bare feet. And these are the regular ones. So that's it for the soldier story. Now I'm going to get into the Hot Toys, Hot Toys conversion on body parts. So these two I'm not going to be working on. To save time, yeah, I got a bucket there and it's filled with spare figures. Don't ask. But that's what you do when you uh, kind of get into these things. You just accumulate tons and tons of stuff. Uh, remember, even if a body breaks, let's say a soldier story or Hot Toys body breaks, you don't have to dump the body because the rest of the body has plenty of parts you can use for other parts. Let's say your arm breaks, your left arm breaks for... Um, a Bane figure, uh, or or just a regular fig, uh, Hot Toys nude figure. If you have another Hot Toys figure that also has a right arm break, you can use the spare piece to fix that one until you accumulate enough pieces that you end up just having one broken body that is unrepairable. So, bits and bobs, man. So, here is uh, Hot Toy's ankle. Now, if you can see this, this is, well, I'm only going to be working on the, uh, the most recent Hot Toy's body, which is the normal one, the advanced, but they're, they basically break down the same with all the, uh, advanced, and I was, since I already had him open um, and apart, this is going. This is actually half of the Arnold body, and this is the upper torso of the Bane body. And I put it together because I just didn't want an upper torso laying around and a bottom torso laying, uh, feet laying around. So I put it together. That's what we saw in the first video. But if you look at this, um, this was when I was playing around with ideas with the Bane body because of the pants were being too tight, I actually shaved down a lot of the thigh and the butt crack area. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you can tell it's been shaved, but it was still, it was still too big. So, since I saved enough time doing that, I'm only going to work on these two, and I'm going to sh take them apart and put them back together again so you get the sense of how it's done and what's inside these bodies that you're dealing with. Now, if you choose to use a slim or the older versions of these bodies, they're basically the same. So I'm just giving you the basics, and you can act when you're taking it apart, you can actually totally do it yourself. I mean, it's self-explanatory. Once you have it open, just have some balls to do it. <laughs> Alright, so to save a little time, um, all these bodies were actually these two bodies. I've already taken the screws out. So if you really want to get down to the, how to start it off is you would normally have these screw caps covering the screws. So they don't actually have all these holes. And you have these little pegs that go in the hole. Now, I'll show you an example of how we would get them out. See, it's hidden because they want to make it aesthetically pleasing. This is one tool. It's a really ghetto tool. It's just a needle. You don't need anything special. There's a needle. Stick it in sideways. And once you have a firm grip of how deep it is in there, just pull out. You know, you don't wiggle it, you just 
slide it out because if you look at it, all you got to do is slide because it just goes in. All right, good. So after you remove them, most of them you you'll you'll just see off the dot because you know, they're just little circles. One, two, three. Sometimes on the torso they might have it, but on this one, on the Bane torso, it does not have it. I'm not sure if I check if the Arnold body has it. No, the Arnold body does not have screws on the torso either. But that'll just show you that it's the same. You would deal with it the same. Um, also, to even get to these screws, and you're working with like bodies like this where it's got that rubber torso there's always going to be look for the seam underneath the arm that would be this seam now what you're going to want to do is I don't recommend heating it up before you pull it apart or go on it because you're actually softening it up and if you apply pressure it'll either rip or the right term for it or it'll thin and loosen to the point where it loses its shape and gets stretched you know what I mean so what you want to do with it is not heat it up leave it alone just the way it is go at it with tweezers strong pair of tweezers by chance or uh, a flat head screwdriver Okay, and what you're going to do is just stick it in about there lightly and just kind of run it through a little bit until you can dig up a lip and slowly but surely it'll come up and then use your finger and apply a little bit of tension and just slowly pull it apart. Once you get it loosened, you don't have to just rip it apart. Once you get it loosened a little bit, because if you look on the inside of this, you see, it's got an indentation where this piece sits in. So now that you know that, you're looking at it from the inside. Now that you know that, what you're just doing is prying it open. It's not heavily glued, and if it is, it's not what ha usually happens. It's lightly glued. It's not crazy super glue either. Um, okay, let me get back to that. Is <clears throat> Alright, which one should we take apart first? Alright, we'll take apart the main body. <clears throat> what you're going to do... Came apart. Now, that's exactly what I was saying. The torso... Um, if you were watching the first video, has that spring, and here's that piece where that spring is. If you see it, it's held by a screw, and that's the only thing. The screw is actually your way to mod the tension of that spring, okay? So if it's too tight, you know... If it's too tight and you can't get him to bend his torso uh, left, right, to the side, and it's really tight, what you would do is you would just, you know, the screws on his backside, three. Normally it would be two, but then they changed it to three. You would take that apart, and you would see that it connects. See that little indentation? Almost like a T. And that circle piece would sit in there with a little bit of pulled out a little bit sitting inside. Alright. Now what you would do is screwdriver, your best friend. Go into that screw, 
and loosen it just a little bit until you have the desired tension you want from that. Now to test it, you would take a different pair of tweezers, not for grasping, but for just getting into small areas like this and seeing how far it pulls apart, which is not that far. So, knowing that, let's take apart the chest. See the inner workings of the chest. Okay, here's that double jointed neck thing I was telling you about. That yeah, I can't. <coughs> here's the back side of his uh, shoulders. Now, if you're looking at this, you see how the arms are connected. Here is the torso ring that connects to that little screwy part. And this piece, which is connected by that little clasp right here. That little circle piece with that lip just slides into these circle indentations, half circles. And then when you close it up, that's where, that's how they don't fall out. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you can see how the arms stay in. You got it? Yes, you got it. Pop in, pop out. There you go. See, not so bad, is it? <clears throat> this would just come out by you kind of sliding it out. You see that? That's it. It would just go here. If it's troubling to remember where all these pieces go, you can take a picture one step at a time, each piece you take off. Take a picture of it so you remember where it goes not that hard. Now here is the big stuff. You see this torso? It's got no screws, no nothing. They actually molded this whole abdomen piece onto this inner plastic. If you can tell it's two different pieces. <coughs> now this is one solid piece while inside you see it's two pieces and the tension is holding this for the tension of the upper torso's articulation. Now you have two options. You can cut it off at the, at the at wherever point you want. Heat it up and cut it off I guess. Uh, slowly pry it open and at this point it will be some semi soft because you heated it up and it would expose you to the inner piece now I don't have any reason to do that so I'm not going to do that for you today <clears throat> but um that was the key part for today's bottom torso. If you can see, that's all that's holding the legs in. Slide it out. It's just a rectangle. And that's how the feet are connected. Now it's uh, easy to see why you can break them. Um, if you look at the back side or the ball parts of these legs as they are with the other normal true types is they have that ball cap, the, the screw cap that covers it again. What you do is you take them out, and that'll expose the screw that holds the leg to this ball together. You take that out, and it'll leave you with the exposed 
joint in here and you can take the leg off. Uh, no reason to do that um, if you want to just change the legs. Now these legs uh, don't have a point to unscrew so they kind of just built this one cat onto the knees. And here are the knee joints Double hinged. It's nice that they fixed it since um, the Batman incident, where all, all everyone's knees for the Batman's were falling apart. Now here's the ankle. This is the extended ankle to make them taller. But for the normal ones, you know what gives them their uh, height is actually this piece, this separate piece, which is this piece. Now what it is, is just basically this part. Now look at the way it's put in there. So you can pop it off, but I don't suggest it because most of them are lightly glued. But once you pop them off, loose forever unless you want to glue it back on. So now we're going to take apart, if you can see the mess I have here with all of these, these pieces. The massive pieces. We have now this one to use. Now I'm going to take him apart. Now, again, screws one, two, three, four, one in the shoulder, and well, what do you know? He didn't have any screws here, so. That I'm going to show you how to just pop open. Alright, so what the difference between these bodies are, if you look right here, after you remove the screws, you see these, where the seam is. What you want to do is you don't want to just pry them open because this is actually a clip. You're going to want to stick something in there and pull up while pulling apart. You see that? So while I do that, while that one's out, I can push down on the front towards the chest while sticking my finger here, pulling away. So, there you go. That's it. Not even any pressure. Just, that's all you gotta do. Now once that's off, really dealing with these, you don't need a lot of pressure. You just take this, avoid damaging it. Actually, look, it just popped open itself. Back plate. Now, I'm going to show you, before everything falls apart, how it is connected on the inside. There you go. Same thing. See the pinwheel underneath the shoulders? the circle around here and this neck piece let's slide that out that's the only oh there you go that's the only thing holding that in so basically it would slide there and that's how that goes now with these with this true types arm And this true type's arm. Notice the difference in the shoulder. One's wider than the other. This one is wi the wider than the bane because when it's sitting against the body, it doesn't have a long distance away from the chest. See what I mean? is not a long distance away from the chest as opposed to the Bane body where he has a thicker chest and he has a longer way to go. So here would be this one on a normal body. You see? Now it'll work 
but you can see why there's so much space here. <coughs> also, if you look at it, that circle spacer is a lot smaller than this circle spacer. No difference because above it, it's the same width. So it sits in this socket just as easily. Okay? Fits just as easily. So if it irks you, you can always sand it down a little bit or open this up a little bit. Now, you can't be afraid. You might have to use a Dremel or a, a knife tool to get like a sharp, uh, damn it, an exacto blade. And there you have the torso piece. Now, here's what we're going to do. Now, you see this piece and the vein torso. Basically, this is what's in there, basically. What we're going to do is, since this one has holes, and I've already taken it out, I'm going to show you how to pry it open. It's already got somewhat of a seam. I suggest you get into that seam, and slowly, you hear that? You don't need much force. And now it's cracked open. Here's where that spring tension might be. I actually have an open one. Yep, there you go. Pop. See the spring in there? That's the tension. Now, here's the ball. That's it. Had the tension from the top. If this ever gets loose, I suggest that you do this. Add a little bit of crazy glue to the tip, let it dry, you know, the same effect of thickening it. And then putting it into the joint again and seeing if the thickness has held. So that's a quick fix. Now with that piece, basically, it's exactly like this. That's on the inside of this. So this is the other side of this. And that's how you would loosen the tension of that spring. So, um, that is basically the tutorial. All you need to know, actually here, I forgot about this. Uh, we'll take apart the leg now. Same thing, just popping it open. Why do I keep putting the screwdriver away? Find a seam, Preferably one that you don't see very often and hidden. This one's actually done really well. Another best friend. Well, I don't know if it's a best friend to you. Actually, I'm not going to use that. Uh, I don't know if it's a best friend to you or not, but for people who love doing this kind of stuff, it is. And these tools are essential to what you want to achieve doing this kind of stuff. I am going to have a little difficulty taking that apart at this moment. And if I'm already running 35 minutes into this video. But basically what you're going to do is pry it apart. Take your time. Don't ever rush these things, especially if it's your first time doing it. You do not want to rush it. Refer back to pictures, refer back to the video, whatever you have to do. You don't need to rush it. When you pop this one open, which I should have done before, it'll just expose how these knee joints are connected to this thigh piece. There might be a little bit of glue in here. You might have to take it easy and go a little bit at a time. Also, if you just 
want to skip that process of replacing this whole piece, you can just take off the the ball hole. Just remember, um, they all come apart. This again, covered by a screw. You can just uh, unscrew that and do that. So to keep the video from running way too long. I'm going to put the massive body or the massive torso on the regular body and let's see what we get. You never know you never know what you're gonna get unless you take it apart. Uh it's the same can be said for everything. Um but that's the fun part about it. Okay, that's together. Now we have that hoop. What we're going to do is the top torso. Where's the front of that top torso? Front of that top torso. Now look, it doesn't fit. This, compared to this, is too wide. And it doesn't fit in here because it's too wide. These two side pieces are going to be in the way of that giant outer circle ledge. Now you have two options. You can either grind this away, it's just enough that the this will fit there, or you grind this circle smaller to this. I suggest you grind this. Because this causes no structural integrity to fail, while this one will. Especially if you're going like this. You know, think about moving the figure. So that one's not pliable without modification, and I'm not going to get into that modification, but I just told you how you can do that modification to get that torso on. Um, I think that's it for today, unless you want me to put this figure back together, which I will do right now. Uh, it's not hard. It's fairly fast. And you don't have to worry about breaking things, friends. If they break, it breaks. It was bound to break anyway if you're going to speak that way. So don't worry about that snapping. It was just the clip of the front torso and the chest piece clicking together. Oh, forgot to mention something else about the arms. Now, that was a quick swap. Now, look at the difference between putting the vein arm to this body. It's nice and all. You get the forward and backward movement. If he has it kind of hunched forward, you can't see anything. You can the back, you can see everything. But these are the reason why I love shoulder joints. Now, you can pull up and then slide down, and his shoulder is hinged up. And you can hinge down, slide down, and in. And his natural line. Now, what I love about these. Alright, so take it easy. Remember what what's holding the figure together. Think about the joint behind the joint. And you will not break figures as easily anymore. Especially when you get that new figure from Hot Toys or whatnot, and you're like, oh, this is gonna be awesome. I'm gonna pose it. And you're just flinging his arm about from his wrist expecting it's not going to pop things pop hold them by the joints it's always best to hold by the joints because you know how to manipulate it now and you won't cause any extra stress that it might or might not take you know what I mean alright so have fun ladies and gentlemen and I hope you enjoyed this vid subscribe if you like or not whatever see you around